Hey YouTube, this is Mike with Tutorials Quick. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Animo app for the Apple iPhone or iPod Touch, fourth generation and above. They also make an iPad version, which is pretty cool. I highly recommend you pick it up. You can get it for pretty cheap on the Apple App Store. Let's go ahead and dive into it. At the bottom here, you have your note selectors. You can play multiple notes at once. And you can control different parameters depending on the preset by moving your fingers up and down. To the left of the note selectors, you have your mod wheel, which currently isn't set to control anything, but you can set that. And I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. And your pitch up and down buttons, which also currently aren't selected to control anything. Uh, above the note selectors, you have your octave selector. And to the right of that, you have your note selector expander. So up at the top here, you have your keyboard correction. What this does is when it's all the way to the right, it quantizes the notes so that it matches the concert tuning. To the right of that, you have your keyboard glide. So let's turn that all the way up so you can have a difference. Let's turn it back down again. Here you can kind of hear the notes more distinctively when it's all the way to the left. What this does is it changes the time between the notes triggering. And to the right of that, you have your volume. Go ahead and go back to that other screen. So at the top here, you have your page and it says module. You have a couple different menus here. You have timbers, your envelope, and scale. This is where you can set the scale and setup. So let's go back to the module. I'll go through those menus in the next tutorials. To the right of that, you have the preset that you're currently controlling. Right now it's set on the default. You have a number of different presets to choose from. They're alphabetically organized. Let's use the analog wobbler. To the right of that, you have a save button where you can save your current preset as a new one. To the right of that, you have your BPM. You can change it by either tapping on it and dragging down and up, or you can tap out a BPM if you want. By tapping on this button says tap. So let's set it around 121, it's fun. So to the left here, you have your X and Y pad and timber selector. This green dot in the middle here controls the center point. And as you play different notes, you'll notice that you have different colored dots moving along this predefined path here. That's set by this path button right here. And you can clear that if you want, and then the note will just stay in the center here, unless you have an orbit set, which we don't right now. But under this menu, you can set up a path by tapping on where it says edit, and then tapping on this X and Y display here. And when you hit a note, as you see, it'll go along that path. And you can set the control of how this moves along the path by either back and forth, which is what it's doing right now, or it'll loop where it'll go to the end and then go back to the beginning. Or you can have it just go to the end once and stay there. So you can also change the rate of how it moves around by this knob right here. And if you want to sync the rate to your BPM, you're gonna tap the sync button. And it'll sync it to the BPM that you're at. So let's clear that. To the right of that, you have your filter. 
So this first control here controls the drive of the filter. To the right of that you have your envelope. Below that you have the resonance, which kind of controls how much emphasis is put on the frequency. And this knob controls your frequency. In the middle here you have the type of filter that you're using. There's low pass, band pass, or high pass. Let's change it to band pass. And then high pass. Low pass sounds the best. To the right of that you have your orbit, which will change how your notes move around the center point here. See as you increase the X amount, it moves on the X axis more and more. This will change how much it moves on the Y axis. This affects the rate that your notes move. The sync button will sync the rate to your BPM. So at the bottom here, you have your thick, and this controls whether if you want to detune it. As you can hear, it's not doing anything right now because the button to the right of that is off. This unison button controls the detune button. So if you want to set it on two and then detune it. So below that you have your crush. It's kind of like a bit crush effect. To the right of that you have your drive. To the right of the thick menu you have your delay menu. This button syncs the delay to your BPM. You can change the time of the delay here. The bottom one here changes the mix of the delay. Let's turn it all the way up so you can hear it better. This controls the amount of delay there is. If you turn the feedback all the way to the right, you get kind of a infinite loop delay. So to the right of the delay menu, you have your LFO. So this top button here controls the rate of the LFO. To the right here you can sync it to the BPM. Below that you control the shape. And to the right of that you have your KB trigger, which is the pressing a keyboard key will trigger the LFO. And to the right of that, you have your record. So here you can record a take that you want to play. 
so let's go ahead and record something. Do so by tapping on where it says record here. And I have it set to give me a four beat count in. You'll notice that there's a bar around the outside of the record that's showing you how far it's recording. You can stop recording by tapping on the record button again, or just wait until it's done. And it'll automatically go into the play and overdub mode. So let's go ahead and stop the overdub mode. And you'll notice the play also has that bar around the outer ring there, it's showing you how far it is through the loop. If you want to save what you recorded under here where it says buffer, you can tap on copy and then you can clear what you recorded and play something else. So let's record something else. If you hit record, you can stop it. Now, if you want to get back what you played originally, you can tap on paste. And then the first recording that we did has now overwritten the second recording. So it's just a good way to save a good recording that you have. Let's say if you overdub and you don't like the overdubs, you can just paste the first recording back. Go ahead and stop that. And that's going to conclude this tutorial on Animoog app for the iPhone or iPod Touch. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where I'll go through the different menus under the page 